Toy Story Land opening this week, I decided it was time to update you on some of the things we've spotted in our previous videos and what the status of some of the construction is over at Walt Disney World. So let's hop right into it. I guess number one on everybody's list is Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, and while construction does progress here at Walt Disney World, we seem to be way behind our brothers and sisters on the West Coast. Yep, over at Disneyland, these babies have already been covered up with mesh, covered with concrete, and painted to look like the rock formations that they are supposed to be. Ours just kind of look like, well, antennas. And Disneyland's Battle Escape building looks way more finished than ours, maybe because this side of it's already been painted and you can see the mechanicals on the roof there. Now, according to the card they left in our room at Pop Century back in October, there's going to be five different stations for the Disney Skyliner, so I thought we'd take a look and see what the progress is on them. First up is the one that serves the Art of Animation in Pop Century Resorts. Connecting up at the old Generation Gap Bridge that links the two resorts, we last checked on its progress way back in October of 2017. That was back when I was still taking vertical pictures on my cell phone. Yeah, I know, I, I do better. And as of last night, it didn't look that much different from the art of animation. And while they do have piers coming up to the lake, they haven't done any of the piers in the lake yet. The next Skyliner stop is set to be the Caribbean Beach Resort, which itself has a lot of construction going on. Oh, and for those of you currently dining in the tent, this is what Shutter's Restaurant is going to look like. From there, with what I guess could be called a spur route, it heads over to Hollywood Studios. And here it's easy to spot how much more the towers are done than the actual stations are. You can trace the towers all the way across the parking lot to the new station at Hollywood Studios. And as you can plainly see, work does continue on the construction of the stations. I guess the next thing they have to do is make this look like this. Also in the parking lot of Hollywood Studios, work continues on the bridges and roadway. It'll take you to the new entrance and exit off of Victory Way and the Osceola Parkway. I don't think you'll be able to come in off of Buena Vista anymore. The next Skyliner stop is said to be the Riviera Beach Resort, itself under construction. But I can't help but thinking that due to its close proximity to Caribbean Beach Resort, these two are going to share a station. Coming from Riviera Beach, the Skyliner is going to parallel Buena Vista Boulevard before it makes a sharp right and heads over to Epcot. And construction continues there. The last stop on the Skyliner is scheduled to be Epcot's International Gateway. And when we visited there in October, there was just a wall with a door in it, and on the other side, some green construction fabric where the tower was going to be. And when I took this picture on the 20th of April, that tower was all ready to go. And Wednesday, you can see not only that tower, but several behind it. Now, because of the wall, it is a little more difficult to see the construction on the station, but you can see that there are some concrete piers sticking up here. And since we're still at Epcot, everybody's always checking on Guardians of the Galaxy, but hardly anybody's checking on the construction of Ratatouille behind France, and that superstructure's coming along really nice. One of the other things we covered in video was all the construction going on over Coronado Springs of the 15-story tower and the Oasis Floating Garden. You can check the links at the end of this video, but here's the progress as of June 26th. One of the other things going on over at Coronado Springs was all the room renovations that were taking place over at the Casitas section. And now, thanks to Mike, I've got some pictures of what it looks like in a new room. The first thing you notice is no more carpet. And then you'll notice Disney is no longer using the platform beds, so now you got a place to store your luggage while you're staying. They've also added way bigger TV sets, but I'm not sure how I feel about the new renovation. They just don't look worn out of springsy to me anymore. Although I guess the barn style doors across the bathroom kind of do make up for that. Although I think I liked them better when they were darker color. The only problem I really have is with pictures that I've seen of, like here at the Pop Century Resort, 
and the All-Star Movies Resort renovations. And now these pictures over Coronado Springs, it seems like they're making them all generic and kind of leaving the Disney theming behind. I mean, wasn't it always the Disney theming that set apart the Disney hotels from every other hotel and just made it kind of magical to stay there? I just hope they're not somehow losing sight of that. Now, speaking about rooms, and because I always want to have something for Fort Wilderness Ricky, we recently stayed at the Fort Wilderness cabins again. You may remember that I went off on a rant about Disney's sofa beds and how they haven't updated them since they put in the new cabins. Well, before we headed over to the cabins, my wife stopped over at Target and picked up an inch and a half foam mattress topper. And well, I don't think it's my responsibility to make the beds better at Disney, I was able to sleep the whole time I was there. It really worked. So, just a suggestion, although we got ours on clearance for 39 bucks, and they're usually about $100. And well, it seems that at times even Mother Nature was conspiring against me to stop me from shooting video. Thanks to the horticulture people at Disney, they cleared this mess right up and I was able to get on with it. And it also gave me time to get the rest of the video footage and stills I needed to work on my very special secret project that's going to be appearing pretty soon here on YouTube. And kind of a pseudo update to the Trails End restaurant in Pioneer Hall over at Disney's Fort Wilderness Campground. I mentioned that they didn't have a lunch buffet. And that's kind of true, but on the weekends they do have a Saturday and Sunday brunch where it covers both breakfast and lunch. So it's still the same thing and it's still great food. And you can check out my video on more fun things to do at the fort. Just follow the links at the end of this video. And as of me publishing this video, I still haven't stayed at the Boardwalk Resort. Emmy's all dressed up, looking for your likes and comments. If you liked the video, why don't you go ahead and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, don't forget to click on the bell icon. That way you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.